Hey there, my name is Prakash. I'm one of the co-founders and the head of product of Xano. Um, you're probably coming here from the awesome no-code devs workshop that we did with Thunkable. And that basically just built a Yelp style application using Thunkable as the front end and using Xano as the back end. And so the Yelp style application basically is stores or merchants uh, their ratings or reviews, and then users that made those ratings or reviews. So this uh, snippet, this backend snippet that we've created here in Xano has everything that you need to get it working in Thunkable. And I'm going to walk you through each part of the snippet right now. So you can add it to an existing uh, Xano account if you have it. Uh, but if you don't, you can just click preview snippet and get started. Now previewing a snippet doesn't actually create a Xano account. It actually creates an anonymous sandbox that you can work in and, uh, and play around with. And it's fully functional, comes with a database and API endpoints. However, if you want to you know, tinker with it and then use this API and your own Xano account, you can go ahead and claim it using this button over here. So let's talk about the contents of this snippet. It comes with one API endpoint that basically is called by any front end that gets you the merchants by uh, the distance to your location, whether that's hard coded or through your device. Um, it comes with three database tables, and then it comes with an add-on, which we'll explain shortly. So let's start actually with the database tables because the database is the heart of any application. So you can see there are three database tables here within Xano. Let's start with the user table. So there's already four users that are pre-populated here. And within Xano, our like spreadsheet type editor, uh, to add data to the database, you can just go ahead and click add new record if you wanted to add a new person. Um, or you can click this plus button over here and then you can add a new field. Any type of field that you want, um, we support. So I'm going to get rid of this user because we'll just stick with the test users right now. Uh, I'm going to go back and the second uh, table I want to go into is the merchant table. So the merchant table basically just contains all of our stores. And these are some restaurants or some popular restaurants along with their description, a banner, and location, okay? Again, if I wanted to add more metadata on each restaurant, I would just add them here. Um, but uh, the cool thing about Xano is like, let's say I wanted to add another restaurant, I'll add via Maestra. Maestra, that's my favorite Italian restaurant in Santa Barbara. Uh, the cool thing about our, uh, our location storage is that uh, we have a built-in uh, Google Maps uh, uh, or Google Map that you can just use to search for any location. And uh, there's, there it is, Femis Maestra in Santa Barbara. You can add the point and then you can save it. And it saves the lo uh, longitude and latitude in the proper geo format. Um, I'll delete this for now because uh, we'll use just this test data, but you can see how easy it is to manipulate. The final table is the reviews table. And this contains uh, a couple fields. First, a table reference to the user a table reference to the merchant ID. And these table references are done by adding a table reference here and talk or specifying the table that you want referenced. But the idea here is that a review is written by a user and is written about a restaurant. So th that's why there are table references. And the cool thing is it's all autocomplete. So once you specify uh, the data, uh, Xano makes it really easy for you to edit the data right here and, uh, and link up uh, all the properties and all the relationships. There's also a comments field. And then finally, an integer, which basically contains the rating of that specific restaurant. Okay, So that's just an overview of all the database tables. Let's go into that specific API endpoint look at the merchants by distance. If you haven't seen this before, this is our no code API editor. There are three sections to it. One is the inputs that we get back from the front end, right? So in this case, we're getting a location or a latitude and longitude um, back from the front end. And that remember, you can use your device's data or you can hard code that. Um, the second piece is the function stack. And this is lit uh, literally a stack of functions that gets executed when this API endpoint is called. And then finally, there is the response, and that is what is being returned to the front end. So this is returning the variable merchant, and that's actually gotten from here, right? You query all the records in the merchant database table, you return it as merchant, we do some data transformation, which I'll, I'll talk to in a second, and then we return that merchant object. So if I run this right now, it's going to ask me for a location, but I actually don't need to specify one the way this is written. I can just run it, and I can see um, that I'm getting back all of the different merchants, right? 
um, and, and their associated reviews. So let's step by step go through each one of these line items so you understand what's happening. So I'm actually gonna just hide this for right now and I am going to also, um, yeah, so let's just start here. So right now, if you go to the output, you're seeing that it is returning the contents of the merchant table, right? The merchant has all of these different fields, but we're also using a Xano feature called add-ons that allow you to add on or enrich the data uh, of a related object. So remember, merchants, you had that table reference to also reviews. So we just clicked add-on and uh, th this is the one we created, but you could create a new add-on. You could select the table that you wanted. It asks you how you want it listed. We did a list of items, and then you select the relationship, and I would say create here. But I don't need to do that. The point you need to understand is that add-ons are a very easy way to link um, database tables together in a single API request. If you're familiar with GraphQL, it's very uh, it's uh, the same, except that we give you a little bit more control over the query. So this allows me to get the review, not only the restaurants, but the reviews associated with the restaurant in one API request. The other thing that we're doing here is we're adding an eval. What is an eval? It's basically an evaluation or a way to basically create uh, a key and value on your response uh, that basically represents any anything you want it to. So I know that might sound a little confusing. Let's click into this eval and see what we're doing. So in this case, what we're doing is we're going into the merchant.location. Remember, merchant location, that is the latitude and longitude in that database uh, table that I showed you. So let me just show you here. We're basically going into merchant.location, right? That's what this is. So going into merchant.location, um, let me go back to that eval over here. So merchant.location, we're representing that as distance, okay? So right now what we're saying is that we're, we're making a statement saying that, okay, this is now gonna be called distance. Then what we're doing is we're adding a filter, right? Uh, we're filtering by distance and we're using the, uh, the input from the user. We're basically saying, hey, listen, we're going to call this distance and we're using a filter called distance. And let me just show you uh, if I type in distance, provides the distance in meters between two geometries, okay? So we're basically taking this distance, we're uh, applying the distance filter and we're using the location that's being fed in from the user and the input over here. So we're taking that input of the location uh, right over here and we're, uh, and we're specifying that in this eval. The next thing that we're doing is we're multiplying it by 0 0.0062137. Why? Because I live in the US and in the US we do things strangely and this actually converts it into miles. If you wanted this just in meters like it should be, you can just go ahead and delete this. But I just wanted to show you that, that that's what this filter was doing, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get out of this. So now that we've added this distance as an eval, an, as an eval Another thing that we're doing is we are sorting, right? We're sorting on the distance by ascending order. And remember, distance is just what I created over here. So I know that's a mouthful. In, in review, we've first taken the merchant database table, and this, these are the fields that it's going to return. We've then added on the reviews based on the relationship that the review table has to the merchant ID table. We've then added distance onto this payload. So you'll see distance show up here. Here we go, that's from here. And what distance is, is this calculation of where the user is and the actual di distance in meters converted into miles. And we're then sorting ascending, okay? So you can definitely click and review yourself, but that's effectively what's happening over here. So if I run and, so everything else uh, is hidden. If I run and debug this right now, uh, and I don't provide a location, then I'm gonna see the distance as null, right? Uh, for each one of the restaurants, right? Because I haven't specified where I am. However, if I wanna specify uh, a location and I actually provide one for San Francisco, so this is the heart of San Francisco over here. If I go back here and I provide that, so I would just paste that right there and I run it, you can see now the distance is uh, like 8.54 miles away, this, uh, this Peruvian restaurant, okay? And then if I scroll, you can see that by um, this distance number will grow because it's sorting in ascending order. Okay, so now that you've seen this, um, let's talk about the for loop and what it's doing. What you're seeing here is that we have uh, in the response a couple different, or we have basically kind of a messy way that we're 
uh, returning the data. First, in order to get the latitude and longitude, we have to go into a location object. We then have to go into a data object and go into lat uh, latitude and longitude to get it. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but the thing is we actually would prefer it if it was at this first level because a lot of front-end tools, it's easier to get it at the top level than to go and dig into nested arrays or objects to get the data that you want. So let me show you what that means. So what we first do is we do a for loop because we're returning, for example, all of the merchants from the database table as uh, a merchant variable. We're then looping through each one of those merchants as item. So each individual merchant is called item. And then the first, let me actually hide these two. So we'll do one at a time. The first two things that we're doing is we're basically going into that item and we're adding a field called latitude and we're replacing it with, remember that nested array. We use dot notation, which you can look up in our documentation. And we're going all the way in and we're saying, instead of item.location.data.lat, uh, uh, just call it item.lat, right? And we do that with um, la uh, latitude and longitude. So if I run this, what I should see is, um, here we go. So now I still have this nested array of location, but now I've added latitude and longitude at the top level over here. Okay, that's great. So because we've done this, we actually don't even need this location block anymore, right? It's kind of wasted space. So that's what this third item is doing in the for loop. We're going through, we're going through the item and we're unsetting the location. Unsetting just basically takes any object in a given array and gets rid of it. That's what unset does. So if I run this now, once again, that location object should be gone. So I'm gonna do that. Um, and there we go. So we have distance. I don't see location anymore. I just see the latitude and longitude, okay? So the final thing that we do is we actually wanna calculate the average rating, right? Because if I go over here, I can see on each restaurant, um, I can go to each review and I can see the rating is a four and the rating is a three. But you know how on a Yelp style application, they always have that star rating and it's based on the aggregate average of all of the ratings that we're getting. So that's what this uh, line item is doing. And notice how on each one of these, we're always updating the variable item. That's because we're already getting uh, each individual merchant back. We just wanna manipulate that data. And that's kind of one of the things that Xano is best known for. So going into update variable, you, let, let me show you what's happening. We're first um, defining, we want basically an, uh, a key called average rating. It would be great to just, as we get each merchant back, we had something that, that was just called average rating, which was is defined right here. So let's then define what we're gonna put as this uh, average rating. We're gonna go into each individual item and we're gonna do a get. And get is another way to do dot notation, uh, that thing that I was doing uh, earlier. So uh, item.reviews.rating. But get allows you to do a little error handling. It allows you to say, well, I want you to get item.reviews.rating. However, if there is no rating at all, well, you can specify a default. So that means that you're not gonna error out of this. So that's what this is doing. We did a get filter, reviews.rating with a default of a blank array if nothing is happening. Then what we're doing is we're actually adding all of the result, every rating that's coming up, we're summing it together. So if there's like, let's say five ratings of five, then you would, this would get 25. Then what we're doing is we're gonna do a divide because how do you do uh, an average? You take that total amount and you divide by the number of uh, units that are there. So we're gonna divide by items.review, but not items.review the object, we're gonna do a filter called the count. We're gonna count each one of the item reviews and we're gonna divide what we're getting as the sum of this rating by this count. And this last part is just basically saying, as long as there is a review, um, then uh, you can use this number. But if, if it's empty for whatever reason, then use the value of one because we don't want to divide by zero reviews, okay? So that's basically going through each one of these filters. You can click on each one to see how it works, but basically that um, of adding a filter just allows you to keep chaining capabilities or transformation onto any function that you're working with. And I did a whole video on filters uh, that you can watch. So now that we've done this, remember, we've added this average rating. So when I run it now, um, you can see that I'm getting not only the banner reviews, I'm getting the latitude, the longitude, and I'm getting my average rating, right? 
uh, and I'm getting it for each one of the different uh, restaurants or stores that I have. Um, so that's it. Um, I hope that that was helpful. I hope that showed you how you basically could leverage the database to store data and leverage the API to pull data out of that database in a way that works for you and the front end that you're working with. Feel free to let us know if you have any questions, and if not, we'll see you in the next video.